First of all, let's um, start off um, by using something called pfont. So I'm going to create um, a, a new variable, and it's a pfont variable, which means I'm saying um, create a new font, and, um, create a new font in processing, and we're going to call it font. Just to keep things easy. Um, and I'm going to create some new integers as well. We're going to have a y position integer, an x position integer, um, an integer for the opacity. Um, if you don't know what opacity is, I suggest um, looking it up. Maybe it's a keyword here. No, it's not. Um, maybe alpha is? Alpha is. Okay, so let's quickly look that up fast so you can see. Um, da -da 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 -da, image alpha, da -da -da -da. and obviously if the alpha is higher, best thing to do is show you in Photoshop really fast. I can show you that. Um, yeah, just to make sure you understand what alpha is, because that's that's quite important um, in this tutorial, especially. Just wait for that to start up. There we go. So, file, oh, file new. Da -da 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 -da. Computer's a little bit slow today. Uh, let's go to lips tool. Okay, so I've created a lips here, and um, opacity. If you can just see that down here, it's quite small. If I turn that down you can see it's it's getting more and more see-through so the high, higher it goes the more solid the colour is the lower the opacity the more see-through it is that's really useful in a lot of um, creative applications these days because nearly all of them have some sort of opacity feature um, Yeah. so this is what we're going to be playing with today anyway so let's get rid of that so I've got um, a ver they're all integer variables as well uh, so I've got another, yeah, another variable for um, opacity and I will put in a variable for an increment. I could call it increment. I'll, I'll keep it as ink. Um, and, and we're just going to use color. I'm going to call this color cull <laughs> to avoid confusion. And I'm going to create a boolean as well called L. Um, maybe we'll use it. We might do. Void setup as usual. And void draw. So let's start off with the setup. So we need to um, say what these are. So curl is a new color, and a, a color, um, the color function in um, processing is basically our um, three different colors: red, green, and blue. And so you can put them as much as you want. But I'm just going to say zero, zero, two hundred this time. Um, and let's put in a font as well. I'm actually going to use a font from my website um, which you can use as well if you want which is just here so you can actually you can declare it locally if you want as well which means you just put in the font name and stick it in the data folder within your processing sketch uh, within the folder that your processing sketch is in or you can do this which is declare it on a, a website address if, you, if you've got a website for example or if you know where there's a .vlw um, font um, package there. So um, so basically in processing it uses um, VLW files instead of, uh, I think it's TTF isn't it? True true type font I believe it is. Um, it uses VLW font, font um, files. So um, you always have to convert it to VLW. There's a feature for that in processing where you just go tools and then create font and you can choose from all, all of your fonts um, whatever you want and you just name it whatever you like so this is what Arabic uh, type saying 48 so just type Arabic keep it nice and short so you don't have to keep typing out long names when you are formatting it um, so I'll just say again tools create font and you've got your color selector there as well which I think I've shown you before um, okay so we've got our font I'm just going to specify a size as well so let's put this to gonna make it kinda like a banner today actually guys because 
I want to try and make something useful, maybe something you guys could use for your website if you wanted to, or something to play around with and develop. Um, so yeah, I've made the size 1 200 by 100, so that's um, 1200 pixels in width and 100 pixels in height. So that's um, a, a, a long banner. And I'm going to put smooth on, so it smooths out the text and makes it look a little bit better. And our text size, I'm going to, oh, text size, I'm going to stick at 60. I think that'll be about the right size for for this project, um, which means it'll be just over half. It'll take up just over half of the um, height of this banner, which is something around what we want. Um, I'm going to set up the wide position as well, and the wide position is going to be because it's text size 60. We're going to want to be putting it around 70, which is 70 pixels down from the top. So if I was to run this now, you wouldn't see anything now, but it will show you the size. So here's the size here. So we're going to put wide pause is 70, so it's 70 pixels down. Um, and let's stick the frame rate to something nice and high, otherwise it'll look a bit jittery. 120 is pretty good. Um, and we're going to start off with the L boolean value at false. The boolean value is basically either true or false. And L is being set to false here. Okay, um, so let's start with our draw method now. In our draw method, we want to have a nice white back background to play with because you know, white always looks quite elegant, um, especially with this color value as well. With a 200 blue, that's kind of a it's not um, it's not fully blue, but it's it's a, a lighter blue, I'd say actually. Um, so yeah, if we got that at 200, that should look quite nice um, with the background colour white. Um, okay, so now let's put in a. Let's go to. Yeah, let's start by increasing our increment value. You'll see why in a minute. So I'm just saying, add one to add one to ink. Um, and white background. I'm just going to say that. The starting value for this boolean is false. Frame rate, or I should say FPS, is equal to 120. And our wire position is 70. We haven't used the wire position yet, but I'm going to specify it anyway. Um, our text size is 60. Smooth so that text and shapes look clear. Yep. And creates a long banner canvas to play with. There we go. And I also want to mention here can be specified locally or by a web address. There we go. Okay, so we created some variables to play with now. Um, okay, um, so I'm going to start playing around with this. Like the X position, we could say, since we're incrementing, we've got a variable that increments, we're going to say the X position can be inc divided by 12. Yeah, that should do it. And the reason for that, the reason for that is so that it kind of goes along quite smoothly as opposed to incrementing really fast and um, not being able to see the animation we're going to make. And I'm going to set the opacity, opacity will be equal to mouse y times 2. So that basically means when I move my mouse up and down, the opacity will go up and down when we use it, which which we're we're going to use in in just um, just a minute. Okay, so let's start using that increment. Um, yeah, okay. So let's just actually stick in a mouse press function first. If the mouse is pressed, the Let's say the increment will be equal to zero. So it, the increment will get reset when the mouse is pressed. 
and L will be set to true. So we need to create an if statement for L as well. So we'll just put that above the background. If L is equal to true. There's two different um, types of... Um, this is a comparison basically. A double equals compares. So it's saying if L is equal to... Um, if variable 1 is equal to variable 2. So it's saying, and this is a boolean, L is a boolean. So if this boolean is true, then do this. Um, whereas with a single equals, you're just assigning a value. So now I'm saying x pos is equal to um, the increment divided by 12. So that's, that's assigning x pos to whatever value that will be whilst this is looping. So, I'll continue anyway. Um, so if L is equal to true, let's play around with our colour. Let's use our colour. Let's change the colour if this happens. So colour equals... Um, have I shown you the random function, function yet? Let's let's do that. Random uh, 255. So we'll choose a random integer between 0 and 255. Um, we don't need to do that. Let's just copy and paste that. And remember, colour is our red, green, and blue values. That should be fine. Let me just run that to make sure everything's fine. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, we're not using colour yet, so if you do mouse click, you won't see anything yet. But you can see it's a white banner now. So you can see that's made a difference. Um, and we're going to set L to false after, you, after running it. So the um, element is false now. Um, da -da -da -da, uh, uh, um, 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 yes. Okay, let me just call it the auto format so we can see what we're doing. Ah, that's a bit better. Okay. Um, so let's put in an if statement for this increment now. To say that because we need we need some sort of time to be for it to stop running, so it doesn't just go off the screen because it will be used for um, x and y variables in this example so we'll just put if it's greater than a thousand which is 200 pixels before the end of x I think that's what we should use it for um, we're gonna fill color so remember color is three integer, va integer values between 0 and 255 so that, that equates this color here equates for these three values we'd have here, right? So we can just put in colour. So fill colour eighty, and this is our opacity here. So this is saying if it gets to one thousand, keep the opacity at eighty. Um yep. And let's just keep it at say that so it doesn't go above if it so it doesn't go above 1000 and whoever's moving stays somewhere we need to set it to a constant I'm just going to put some notes in here call call is equal to three integer variables oops variables um, therefore we can use this instead of using instead of using instead of typing integer variables. Yep. So that sets it to a constant. Okay. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll stick in a stroke as well. So because we're going to be drawing some sort of shapes, we're going to want some sort of um, stroke color as well. And I don't really want to black stroke which is zero so we'll make the stroke white make the stroke color white and mm. in fact maybe let me just take this line out for a minute because it might be more fun to have the opacity changing so what we'll do, we'll do another one here and we'll say colour 
OPA, which is our opacity variable. And remember where we set opacity here? Opacity is equal to the mouse y times 2. So when we move a mouse a bit, it will go up and down a bit faster. Because maybe it should be 2.5 to be honest. Because um, remember our the height of oh can't can't convert from float to um, let's keep that. Oh, we can make it a float, I guess. Float opacity. Remember a float. A float is any number with decimal places. So it can be like this. Oh, like this. Okay. Um, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. We set it as a, a float now, so that should be fine. And we should be able to run our code. So you obviously can't see anything yet because we still haven't created any shapes to play with. But we set up nearly all the variables um, for the shapes. Um, so let's stick in an ellipse to play with, I guess. So we got our X position. We did set. No, we haven't set our X position yet. Um, maybe we should do that now. Oh no, we have. Sorry. So our x position here, increment divided by 12, so that should be fine. So we've got um, the x position for our ellipse, and actually we'll times that by, mm, yeah, let's try 10 point, let's try 10. x position times 10, y position minus 10, yeah, and um, the reason why we're doing um, minus 10 on the y position here is because we don't want it to um, be too low, so we, we want to be mov moving this ellipse up just a little bit. Because remember, we put um, y position, if I show it up here, to 70. So we want y position to be about 60 for this ellipse. Um, yep, and we'll put the ellipse size to 25, 25. So now we've created that ellipse, you should be able to see it after. When increment reaches 1000, you'll be able to see this ellipse. Let's have a look. Give it a second. There you go. You can see this ellipse is come up now, and we can change the opacity. So, let me just print line that so you can see what's going on. Remember, I was saying that um, it was incrementing. So, let's just put print line inc. You can see in the console here, it will show you now. Oh no, sorry, I put it in the wrong place. I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, let me just stick that just down here and that should show you there you go, now it's printing line increment so it's going up quite fast, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700 when it reaches 1000 in just a second, there you go the dot appears on the screen so now we've got a dot we can play with here so let's just continue that, okay so I've closed that now um, so we've got our increment printing line now, we'll just leave that there for the minute so that we can see what's going on when we're playing around with it a bit later. And so we've got this if statement saying if the increment is greater than 1000, do all this. But what about before that? What do we want it what do we want to happen before the increment reaches 1000? Stick in a fill colour for that. We'll change this a bit, we'll say just fill it something simple, like 127 by 8. And remember what I've wrote up here. I've actually set a color here saying if it if this is true, set the color, set a random color, and then set it to false. So it will set a random color. So if we use the color value here, which we are, so what that means when we press the mouse and and we set L to true, it's going to change the color. So if I can just show you that in a minute. I think the best way to show you that is actually by putting putting the text in. So I'll just finish this first. Um, ellipse mouse x, ellipse mouse y. So it's on the mouse x and mouse y, 25 by 25. This means that before a thousand frames, you'll be able to play with the. Um, oops, you don't need that for the else, do you? Um, you'll be able to play with the um, the circle. So I can play with the circle now. And then after a thousand, when it gets to a thousand down here, which it will in a minute it moves it up the circle and I can't play that anymore. So you've got yourself a little circle at a constant position. Um, and what I'll do now is that's done. Okay, yeah, so what I'll do now 
it's just sticking something for it to draw outside of all these statements. So let's fill, let's use the color value now. So fill in color and use opacity. So based on our, remember opacity is based on our mouse Y at the moment, times 2.5 wasn't it? Yeah, the opacity equals mouse Y times 2.5. So um, fill it with our color, which is up here. Color equals 0, 0, 200. And, and our opacity, which means when we move our mouse it will change. And let's start putting in some text, I guess. Um, have we uh, we've loaded the text, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Um, so we've called our so we've declared a new variable, a p font variable called font, and then we've said font is equal to load font, and then the font's address. Like I said, it can be local. So if I had it in the folder, I'd just have it like um, I'd just have it like this. But because it's not in the folder and it's on my website, it's actually this address here. Um, okay, so yeah, let's start putting in some text. If I remember the if I remember the website, the website I'm talking about. If I remember the command, I think it's text. So let's start. So I'm just going to put in a J. Let's see if that will. Look alright. Two, I think two times the x position would be okay. Just remember what we've we've set the x position to increment divided by 12. So if you see the speed that increments going up, if you times it by two, it should go along a bit quite smoothly. So if I just show you that now. Oops. Oh yeah, of course we need a y position. So let's just put y pos in. Um, so we've got a j going along now and we can control the opacity with the circle. So remember we're filling that with the colour and the opacity and the, the opacity changes based upon the wire position um, with this, this variable here and um, uh, the colour we've already declared at the top. Remember if we click it it changes the colour because of this boolean statement we've put in. So you said um, if L is equal to true set it to another random colour and if L is equal to false, um, oh sorry, if L is equal to true, set it to another random colour, and then set L to false. So I'll do it again, I'll get another random colour, and again I'll get another random colour, and again I'll get another random colour, etc, etc, etc. If you keep clicking it will change colour. So I've actually drawn a J there. So I may as well draw some more letters just to show you how that might look. Um, let's try three times exposition. Yeah, so I'm doing three times the exposition. It will space start spacing out the letters because we're multiplying um, a variable that's changing constantly. You can see the space in between it's increasing now. So if we just do a bit of maths, let's say um, here we go, we've got a new text document here. Let's say the we increase that. Put the size to 18. Here we go. So let's say our x position, because if you look at x position, it's increment. In, it's in, increment divided by 12 x position, isn't it? So, so let's say if this increment, if we do x position times 2, is equal x position times 2, we're getting the increment. So let's say the increment. Let's say the increment is equal to 100. We've got 100 times 2, so that's equal to 200. Um, so if we've got x position times 3, we're going to get an x position of 300. And x pos times 4 should equal um, 400, etc, etc, etc. But if that increment goes up even by 1, you don't get 201, you get 202, and 304, and 406. So it just keeps going up more and more and more. So what, um, no, 303, 404. So you see, see what I mean by that, it keeps spacing it out. So just by it going up 1, instead of it being there and there, it's going to be there and there. 
and again there and there, and again there and there. So um, if I just show you what I mean by that. Um, yeah, I'll just show you what I mean by that. So I'm just going to copy this line and put in a so my initials there, J8 Boston. Um, I'm just going to put in a O. And obviously I want to be changing this as well, so that the spacing changes. If I left it the same, for example, let's look at the B and the O here. If I left them both at 4 of the X position, they'll be overlapping. If I can show you that now. You see, they're, they're not going to be spaced at all. Whereas if I change this to 5, you can see it's spacing out now. Yeah. And you can see I can still change the opacity and everything as well. Um, so let's add all the other letters. Change that to an S. Change that to a T. Oops. Um, o and an N. There we go. Let's see. Bye. I'm just going to change these as well. 6, 7, 8, 9. See, it's incrementing by 1, which means it's spacing it out by one more set of X position. And because X position is incrementing, because it's based upon our increment value, um, should it have it up here? Because the increment's plusing and it's using the increment value to change itself, it's going to keep spacing out by these multiples. I'll just show you that now should have a nice little effect going with this name. See it's coming across space now, now like that. And it's just going to keep going. And it's, when it gets to a thousand frames it should stop. Yep. And it looks like the um, dots actually placed quite nicely. Uh, we could use that actually. So <laughs> what I'm going to do, this is quite cool, um, I'm just going to stick in a com now. <laughs> Putting 11 times, so we're putting another one now. I'm going to put 11 because we've got a dot there, so I'm skipping a number because there's a dot in the middle there, and I don't want it to overlap the dot. It'll be nice for it to go past it. Come there, see how that comes up. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's going to look a bit nicer, isn't it? You see now it's got that effect there. Um, I think it's missing something though. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stick a line underneath. Uh, I've got this print line of ink going actually, haven't I? See that there. If I print line the X position, you'll be able to see that as well. Print line X pos. And I'm just going to put that up there. There we go. So you can see how the increment um, of the X pos goes up. You see it's incrementing that. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So that's the first one. That's where the J. That's where the. Um, that's where the J would be if it wasn't times by 2. It would be somewhere here, right? So I've got a gap here and a gap here now. Um, so I do X pos. If I print line X pos times 2, that will tell me the location of where the J is. Can you see the, the difference there? It's going up twice as fast, as expected. Um, let just put that under here. Oh. Let me just put that under here and put X plus times 2 times 3 so you can see that. So now you can see them jumping between each other. And one of them is going to be going up faster than the other one. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let's just um, carry them print lines. So let me just put in some notes here. This will move the J along until it reaches um, until it until it <laughs> what is it until ink uh, reaches 1000 um, and it's pretty much the same for the rest of these um, the expositions being exposition is being multiplied by two multiplied by two 
and and this is multiplying the x position by 3 which creates spacing between the j and the a there you go and yeah so that's kind of self explanatory for the rest of them just use, just by reading these two lines right um and i'll just say here skipped skipped uh multiple for the dot position yeah okay um so now what i'm going to do is um like i said i think there's something missing from this and i i reckon what we what we should do is stick a line under it or something a nice line would be good yeah so to keep in the theme of the rest of it you see it's kind of all expanding along let me just put a stroke weight first stroke weight put a nice thick line that should be quite thick um, so I'm going to create a line underneath it I'm going to underline it all and because it's at 60 it's drawing it at 60 we'll put it at 50 about 10 pixels under 10 it's drawing at 60 50 you got idea Oh no, of course, it's 10 pixels above. I'm trying that. No, that should be fine. Yeah, 50 should be fine. Um, y pause plus 20. Yeah. Yeah, okay, sorry. 50. Yeah, sorry, so it's x position is 50, 50 away from the side, and it's y position will be plus 20 because. Um, we've got it at 60 and we want it at 70 which, which makes it 10 pixels below it that's what I meant um, 800 plus x position times 3 that's about right so what's going to happen now is it's going to this is our starting position so the x here is at 50 so it's x with a line it's x y and then x y again um, so it's starting at 50 and we want this to go f um, to we want this to start at 800 and then expand based upon the x position times 3 we well, you see we got that here, 3 times x position, it's going to expand on a similar principle to this except it's going to be 800 pixels along from A so if you watch A and, a and this um, equation here they'll actually move along at the same rate um, okay so we need to put in a y position as well here and because we put y plus plus 20 here we're just going to keep it at the same level on the y axis so that we get a nice straight line underneath that should actually draw perfectly oh yeah you see that you've got a line drawing there um, maybe 800 is too much maybe we can put that to 400 and put this this multiplier up to maybe 6 let's see how that goes that should look nice. Should have the same result. Yeah, it looks a bit better, doesn't it? So as it comes along, it will get to the end. Ah, uh, see, that's the only problem. Put that to eight. Let's try that again. And yeah, it's pretty cool. And now we've got this nice little banner that does that, and you can press it again, and it will keep changing the colour. I think the only problem we got here now is that it's not drawing that line the second time, is it? <laughs> so we should probably uh, get it to do that. Oh no, it is drawing a line the second time. It's just not drawing a line the second time once it hit hits 1,000. that's what we need it to do we need to have the line there and we need to say if ink is greater than 1000 da -da 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 -da, and do this as well there you go I mean, we might want to put that under the fill yeah I think we do stick that under the fill, done it's changing the opacity there and then when it hits 1000 oh. we got the back 
background overwriting it. No, maybe not. should actually just be there anyway, but for some reason. Ah, uh, it's probably the stroke, isn't it? <laughs> That's why. Okay. We need to um, do this. My mistake. We need to put stroke zero here. And put line there. That's why. Sorry. Um, so what I basically did, I set the stroke to 2x5 and because the line's fill colour is based upon stroke it's um, caused a problem, this makes the stroke black and it's made it so that, so it's being drawn, the line's being drawn it's just that it's being filled white so we can't see it so now this should fix the problem um, let's see that should be fine no that's still Changing the stroke to white. Let's put stroke here to. No, let's just take that stroke out. I'm sure it'll look fine with that stroke anyway. Stroke color white. Get rid of that. That's better. There you go. So it's kept it now. Um, and actually, where we got the stroke at zero, let's put in zero opa. Zero opa. So it changes by opacity as well. So yeah, stroke can also have um, two values, one value, four values, or just three values. There you go. So now we've got ourselves a nice, sleek sort of looking. Um, design there. Okay, so um, let me just go through the code one more time so that you understand it and um, you've learned something from it as well as made something looking pretty cool. So let's just go from the top. We got a pfont font which declares a new font. Font variable. And we've got a y position. This will be used for a uh, Y position. And we've got our X position. This will be used for our uh, X position. Um, we've got our increment. This will be used for our uh, um, for moving our shapes and wor words along. I should, say, I should say letters really, shouldn't I? Letters along. And we got a colour. This is for changing colour. And we got a boolean. This boolean value is used as. It's actually being used like a switch, I should say, because once we switch it on, once we switch it on, it runs something and then switches itself back off again um, to run once. You should look up that um, method as well, run once. It's quite useful. Um, so, in our setup, we're setting the color to 200 points into the blue, the blue value. I've nearly commented everything here, haven't I? <laughs> um, so, we, yeah, this is loading our font here. Oh, that one's setting the size. This one's smoothing it out, setting the text size. We got our Y position to 70, so that it's kind of three quarters of the way down. Our frame rate's been set to 120, so it smooths out um, the transition. Um, and then we're setting our initial, our boolean value L. We're setting it initially to false, so that it doesn't run this straight away, because you don't want it random, uh, random running random colors all the time. And I'll show you what happens if we do that. <laughs> you just get a random colour, you see. We don't want that. 
Well, I don't know, do we? We could we could have a random colour. It means that it won't start off blue though. But but I mean it's up to you. I mean personally I, I kinda like I kinda like it starting at false because then I could I get to set a um a, a colour to start off with. Which looks quite nice. Okay, so we've got all of that. So we're saying if L is true set the color ver col color variable to something random um set l to false and on the x position we're saying the x position is equal to the increment um divided by 12 and that will make it go along smoothly um the opacity opacity is set to the mouse wire variable times 2.5 and, and remember the mouse wire can only be 0 to 100 because our our y um, we set y to 100 for the um, size, the screen size we set it to 1200, 100 it's 1200 for the width and um, for the height it's 100. So because we set the height to 100, it can only the opacity can only go to um, um, the opacity can only go to 100 unless we multiply it by 2.5, in which case it can go to 250. So maybe it should be 2.55 and it can go up to 255. But I mean the advantage of lowering this is that you might get a, a nicer looking blue. So if I set it to um, maybe one, maybe one point five is a bit too low. I set it to two, which is I think we had that before, didn't we? Um, set it to two, and you see it's a little bit, a little bit nicer the colour. It's a bit harder to get that. There we go. Maybe let's set it to one. See what that looks like. There's no point in multiplying it by one because it's the same colour. So yeah, one looks quite nice as well. So let's, I'm going to say one point five. <laughs> um, okay, so. The opacity set by the mouse y variable times 1.5 um, multiplied by the multiplier. <laughs> there we go. Um, so if if the mouse is pressed, if the mouse has been pressed, um, increment. Oops. Increment. Um, the um, increment is. I should say ink even. Variable variable ink is set to zero and Boolean L is now true. And once Boolean L is true, which is back up here, it does what we've just wrote here and sets the colour and then sets L to false. So that just runs once and then sets it to false. Okay, so we've been promoted to this. And remember what I said about line as well, and how it multiplies and goes along. We've got a fill colour on everything else. I think I've explained pretty much all the principles you need to make something like this now. Um, so I think that's it for this tutorial. Um, in the next tutorial, I'm not too sure what I'm going to go through yet, but um, I'm going to have a think about it and then um, post it at the end of this video. So um, I'll see you guys later.